Hey everybody, this is Adam Kokesh Whee! for a special edition of Adam vs. the Man here on No Force One roundtable discussion with some of my favorite Libertarian Party activists. And we, Ted Metz. And <laughs> 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 Thank you, Ted. We are at the Libertarian Party State Convention in Georgia, in Douglasville, near Atlanta. And I'm here with Ted Metz, Stephen Akila, and Joshua Smith. And I'm just going to at least give each one of them the first, like, lay out your resumes, gentlemen. Josh, you want to take it away? I'm uh, the treasurer for the Contra Costa County Libertarian Party. Um, oh, I'm also an <laughs> at-large at representative for the Libertarian Work, Party of your California. Way up. <laughs> yeah, I'm at-large representative for the Libertarian Party of California, at-large representative for the Libertarian National Committee. I'm also the chair of the Affiliate Support Committee and on probably 10 other committees as well. So... Uh, that's what I do. I'm also the number one recruiter on the Libertarian National Committee currently. Woohoo! All right. Woo All right. And much yeah. like Josh, I am a treasurer of the Libertarian Party of the Florida Keys, however. <laughs> I am also the chairman of the Libertarian Party of Florida and the Region 2 representative. I represent Florida, Georgia, and Tennessee. And uh, four years on the LNC, five years with the LPF, and before that I was involved in Young Americans for Liberty at FIU, and just Continuing, uh, but how do you like feel about Florida Georgia Line, though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you mean uh, <clears throat> the band? North, 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 what is North, North, North Florida? I, I got a harder one. What's your position on Nickelback? <laughs> <laughs> That's the easiest question I've ever been asked. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ted. I'm Ted Metz. I live. I'm sorry. I'm domiciled here in Georgia. <laughs> um, I'm the past chair of the Libertarian Party of Georgia. I'm currently on the executive committee. I <clears throat> run several for several offices here in Georgia. My most recent run was for governor of Georgia. It was interesting. I meet people every day, and just from people I meet that said that they voted for me, there's no <laughs> way that the voting results were right. So, <laughs> I'm coming right off the gate. Yeah. I'm going to say that if you're in Georgia listening to this podcast, be sure to vote absentee because that way... There's a physical record of your vote that cannot mm. be electronically manipulated. Sure. Okay, so um, currently I'm in the I've been in the medical marijuana. I got to like back up a little bit. I started out with the Ron Paul campaign of 2012. I was with a group that infiltrated the Republican parties, and and we just we're gonna have to roll through some interruptions with No Force One parked on the street here. It's um, okay. We got a peanut gallery in the background. We're gonna have fun <laughs> with this one. I don't doubt we're gonna have some cheap shots from the chip shots from the cheap seats. Cheap, cheap, I, I, cheap shots from the cheap I'll, seats. I'm gonna smoke more of Ted's weed so I can talk less and give you guys the floor. But yeah, hey, the the, the parties. I'm gonna have to smoke this and be passing your weed out to that's, everybody. That's fine. <laughs> the, the, the rest of the quiet. bus. I'll go ahead and finish my resume. We, we got into the Republican Party of Georgia. I was uh, voted the third vice chair of our district and also uh, uh, 39th district chairman for the Republican Party, and I was fighting with the Republicans until 2014 when one of our friends, Gretchen, uh, I was at a breakfast with them, with the Libertarian Party, and basically they said, oh, we have paper candidates, and we need somebody to run for insurance commissioner because Gretchen didn't, was the paper candidate, and I happen to have a career in insurance. So I said, well, let me do it. So that's how I got into the Libertarian Party, and that was my first statewide race was for insurance commissioner. I actually did pretty well. I got, like, um, almost... 5% of the vote in that particular election. So then I came uh, pretty he hot and heavy into the Libertarian Party. I've been at several conventions. I was on the McAfee campaign staff for 2016. Um, so currently I'm about to make the announcement tomorrow that I'm going to run for U.S. Senate against uh, uh, our appointee named Kelly Loeffler, who is the who your husband owns a stock exchange and our governor wants more money so he's putting people in Washington to funnel deals right so she got her appointment by essentially donating 15 million dollars to the Republican National Committee so part of my <laughs> campaign speech is going to be if I had donated 16 million <laughs> so I'm not done fighting for liberty um, I really enjoy changing the dialogue I, in my gubernatorial run I talked about uh, medical cannabis industrial hemp, um, ending qualified and sovereign immunity and, and jury nullification and several other things that they actually did introduce bills into the legislature last year. 
We did get uh, industrial hemp legislated. We have more uh, conditions on our, on our medical cannabis legislation, which is something different because we still can't get it here in Georgia unless you talk to people who know how to get it. And then um, there was a fully informed jury bill that was, that was um, got to a committee and never went any further. And there were two bills, one of which actually got to the governor's desk to rein in sovereign immunity and qualified immunity. And for those people out there, qualified immunity is what uh, keeps politicians from being uh, convicted of, of their malfeasance. <laughs> because they're in office, they're elected, they can lie, they can cheat, they can steal. You know, on George's books, basically a politician during ses session can't even be arrested. They have they they are allowed to lie from the floor, and the other act, the other thing that we're talking about right now is jury uh, grand jury access, because grand juries here in Georgia, Georgia especially have been overtaken by judges and district attorneys. And the thing about the grand jury is an Article Four Constitution, Article Four Court, mm -hmm. and the citizens are supposed to run that. So, if we can't get access to our redress of grievances against government. We have a huge problem, so that's one of the biggest fights we got right now. Grand jury access, jury nullification, no victim, no crime, and I'll stop there. So well, I'm, Ted, I'm not done yet. There's one other thing you gotta say by way of introduction because the interesting side of your face is turned away from the camera <laughs> and won't be picked up by the microphone. Well, I'll, I'll you, can they see me? Yeah, yeah they um, I, I'm also I'm a cancer survivor. Um, right. I, I got a squamous cell carcinoma that started on the outside of my ear and it came and went for like about 18 years. I think it was a, a Navy. Uh, I worked as, as radar technician in the Navy. I think it was like a radiation in, injury. Uh, so it had been treated on and off and then one day it just like went crazy and within the space of about a week it, it, it took over my entire ear and started um, into my lymph nodes and I started getting uh, like tumors in my neck and by the time I had surgery damn near killed me didn't it yeah, you so were they, they remo re removed my my left ear is gone and I have a huge uh, basically skin graft that they took from my leg and all the tumors they took out of the neck they packed with most of my quadricep that came out of my left leg so not only can I not hear out of my left side and and look kind of like Frankensteinish, it's hard for me to walk because I don't have any <laughs> quadricep muscle so is that what you wanted to hear? Yeah, man. That's, but you're, I mean, but you're here. Uh, what? Yeah. But you're that's, here. No, it's, it's, yeah. it's a, that's an it's a an intense, beautiful cancer survivor story, and you know, a testament to to your will and perseverance, and 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 also to worth, the, pa the power, the healing power of cannabis. cannabis. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I will point out again, we have uh, we have a live studio audience. <laughs> for this podcast. They might be paying attention, they might not be. It might just be a bunch of people, I don't know, smoking pot on the other side of the bus. <laughs> should we hold, but should we hold up the lap signs for you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Want you to yeah. All right, there you go. We need, we need like boo signs yeah. and like everything. Uh, like yeah. full, full audience interaction. You here. guys can interact, right. you know? Yeah. So, Let's I'm, go with an emotion. I, I, I can, this, is, this is a really, from my perspective, like an elite round table of, of guys who I have a particular unique respect for as party activists, as, you know, and that's a general term within the Libertarian Party, but for, for people who are willing to like step up and actively take officer roles, deliberately, conscientiously, to have an agenda, to be engaged, to drive, I mean, you guys are, you guys are the engine, you know, I'm, I'm running to be the hood ornament, you guys are the engine, and I, you know, I, your resumes in particular I have a lot of respect for. So I'm going to start with the dumbest question possible and see if, see if we can illuminate Oh, this so, isn't a weld question, is it? Are we going no, back it's to, dumber are we going than back that. To the it's question? dumber than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How much? Never to get a straight how, how many Nickelback songs do you know the lyrics to? All because all, all of them. All no. All right. Oh, hey, the pipe's coming back. Very around. little. Ted, would you like to smoke some of your own um, weed? Not on camera. No. I know. So I know. Look at this camera. photograph. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, there's none in there. Right? Oh, there's. We can Where's repack it here. We can ash it out. Anyway, so here's the the dumbest question that I could possibly ask three of the most respected party activists, James Weeks dancing naked, good or bad for the party, why, why not? Yeah, sigh, that's probably the, that's probably the right answer, Steve, when you start with that. No, it's, it's kind of a trick question. I'll, I'll start I'm gonna with throw, that. throw something I'm, fun and, and difficult at you. On, on the one hand, it brought publicity to the party. People became aware, oh, there's a third party? Oh my God. <laughs> um, but on the other hand, it was, you know, James Weeks the third 
<laughs> Don't forget the third. I, I was pretty pissed off. We were in the Florida delegation, so we're right in front and row and center <coughs> of all the action. And uh, yeah, we didn't we didn't consent to those uh, to those tickets. But uh, <laughs> here's an interesting uh, side aside from that. James Weeks was up on stage doing his strip tease while while the big money donors from Weld's camp were making a deal at the table behind me, and I was on the camera uh, podium like kind of getting camera shots of that deal going down. <laughs> so was he a distraction? I'm not. I'm not. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you this. Uh, I don't know whether it was a good or bad thing for the party. I know it definitely kept... You know, people say several times a day that they didn't, they won't join the Libertarian Party because of the naked dancing guy. But that's a terrible excuse. Were that's an they, excuse. That's for, that's someone who's looking for an excuse. Were they going to actually join or right, not? No. Probably no. not. Yeah. Um, but you know, I don't, I don't really know if it was a good or bad thing. I what I do know is that five minutes before that happened, the gavel was handed to Jim Lark, who is the nicest guy in the world <laughs> and not very good about calling things to order, and uh, that might have been on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, see, now this is cool because now okay, we're getting all these inside baseball stories around this. Yeah, I didn't even thought that. Connected yeah, no, I've heard, I've heard. I think I've heard half a dozen conspiracy theories now. This Infowars edition of the Libertarian Party. <laughs> We've got the documents. <laughs> oh man, no, I, I yeah, no, there, there's some. The, this is not news, but it is fun to hear from you guys that your 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 theories, the behind the scenes stories of what was going on there. I I think it was a bad thing overall, but I'm glad that it happened in the sense that okay, we showed we can deal with that. We can we can kind of own it. We and be persevered. Like, yeah. Regardless. Okay. We're gonna pull them off the stage, but if that's you know you got tokens from the delegates to be there essentially. Well, the right. counter argument that you I got know. from some of my other libertarian friends when they were confronted with that is like, yeah, but how how free can you feel as a li libertarian that you feel like freedom enough to like take your clothes off in front of this uh, audience <laughs> on national TV during you know a televised you know event? Oh, C-SPAN, right? C-SPAN. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, C-SPAN. C-SPAN. Yeah. Three. They ran four. that thing. Highest ratings oh, ever. They ran <laughs> that thing on a loop for two <laughs> years <laughs> after that on a loop. It's like a whole news channel was James Weeks naked. They'll see yeah, C-SPAN three. It was yeah. special for. <laughs> yeah. They'll do Just it until the footage. the font looks old and out of style. They'll keep running that. Yeah. No. And and I get it. Like it's going to be used against us, but. My experience has been, we're in the ignore you phase. Mm. Sure. You know, yeah. first they ignore you, and and, and it, you know, there's a lot of ways that we're stuck in that. You know, I hear Donald Trump covered negatively 93% of the coverage around impeachment. It's like, and then conservatives, despite that, he's still winning. It's like, no, because of that, he's still winning. Mm -hmm. So it's not... All publicity is good publicity. But if the mainstream media just covered us to say how crazy we are and attacked us for everything they possibly could, would we not be better off? Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, and there's that old adage that, you know, any coverage is good coverage. It, the thing that, that really is, is still heart-wrenching for me is the complete media blackout. And, and like shadow banning on social media and such. Yeah. yeah. I think the worst thing we could be is boring. You know, yeah. you don't, I don't want to be like the Bud Light of political parties. I want to be like that <laughs> that nice craft beer. Really? <laughs> this is all they have left, Steven? Making fun of my beer choices now. This is a convenient prop. Damn it. No, no. Sorry, Adam. <laughs> yeah, we got more Bud Light. Here's the Bud Light. I'm just surprised to see you. No, drinking, I, I, went from, I went from Yingling to PBR to Bud Light tonight. So, <laughs> so you went. That was a good prequel. Well, you started yeah. good, yeah. but you went yeah. all well, the way I love, down. no, I'm a PBR. I, I'm, I, I'm a constructor. Construction beer drinker. Sure. When I'm At building least we know you're bottle, hydrating. Like, yeah. Right, and at the middle, this is the yeah, middle of an afternoon of construction. You know, uh, I can see the end of the day. I'm gonna start putting down PBR. There's no <laughs> beer like PBR for that moment. If I if I'm gonna drink well, cheap swill okay, now, beer, now I like the Miller High Life. Is my thing. <laughs> they still make 32 ounces of it in California. It's the like, champagne. You know, of the champagne of beers. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna let you do that. Yeah. Your line. I don't drink a lot of beer. It's never been a thing I drink. But if I if I want but crappy swill beer, that's the one I run for. We're gonna have to hit up Anheuser Busch and Yingling for uh, sponsorship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> uh, no, no, we're gonna have but a bidding beginning. war. The next sponsor of Adam vs. Man could be Youngling, could be PBR, could be Bud Light. <laughs> But getting, yeah, getting back to the to media the blackout, bear. during my uh, gubernatorial campaign, the newspapers would r run an ad from one of the debates with me and the other two candidates, and they talk about how the two candidates had a debate, and they wouldn't even mention me, even though I'm in the fucking picture. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right you out of the caption. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Jeez. So that's that's the other thing we need to change. You know that. Yeah. Uh, so maybe if we had like a vermin supreme who could actually get some media attention just to draw attention to the party and then use anything that came from um, vermin to catapult into like you know here's our this is why he says this you know our our, our campaign planks would that be a good use of, of his character the magic yeah, boot absolutely I, I think he's got an interesting angle, and I, I think all of our, our POTUS candidates are kind of attacking the election from different angles, and, and their activism reflects that. And I think a lot of the activism from our POTUS candidates... Selfie time. Steven, oh, you can talk and selfie at the same time, can <laughs> That's you? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone but got nervous. You're, you're the only one not drinking. I know. Well, I finished my beer. Smoking. I know. If finish your sentence, extra drink. But, but I do believe <laughs> that all the POTUS candidates, they do have a... A certain niche, some are larger than others, but uh, but it is interesting to see that diversity. And Didn't I was, we I was agree earlier by what Mark the American Whitney niche? Way. Yeah, niche. It's kind of like quiche. <laughs> quiche. I, I, I do I was, like quiche. Everybody's got a quiche. I, that's something I can comment on. I like quiche. It's good. It's good <laughs> breakfast. Quiche. Do you promise free quiche? Uh, no. Okay. No. Yeah. Free market quiche. Quiche, quiche is mine. Kind of I promise that you will live in a world where you can pursue <laughs> quiche. Quiche is too important to be trusted to the government. Yeah. <laughs> quiche. quiche is clish. clish. I quiche. Okay, <laughs> for English majors, that's cliche mispronounced. Sure. Josh, you're Facebook monster. Like, sure. It, yeah. Super active presence. And, Twitter. and doing well on Twitter now. Obviously, you've had some big successes there, but the, the blackout, the shadow banning, the suppression. It'll come for me. Is it, <laughs> is it is it is it engineered? Is it accidental? How does it affect the LP? How do you see it? I think it's I think it's affecting your efforts? absolutely. I think I think uh, you know the people who own these sites work pretty closely with the government, and ideas of liberty are so scarily ra like radical to these people because they know we're coming for their jobs. Um, that's why 9-11, because the government got to a point where most people felt government was, was irrelevant and they had to bring government back into being irrelevant, necessary, save me government. I don't know enough about 9-11 to say if that, that was a conspiracy or not, but I know that there's some shady yeah. things involved in 9-11, so. Um, but yeah, to the, to the point, I, I, I think, you know, it's it's definitely engineered to, to shut people up. I mean, you know, when you have a platform as big as the platform that you've had for years, they know... It comes know and goes, man. It hurts. Yeah. It hurts to feel it come and go. And uh, on you know? shadow banning, too, I'll say that the Libertarian Party of Orange County, which, by the way, they've been employing new strategies. Their analytics have gone up, like, 100% for months on end. Uh, they were shadow banned. And they could prove it. Their analytics just stopped growing. They stopped their reach all of a sudden, and uh, their post stopped showing up uh, to the point where it was obviously it, it seems intentional. And so I do think that you know they do play sides, and there is there are studies out there that show that you know conservative some conservative outlets also get shadow banned, and and there is a bias. You know whether it's Twitter or Facebook or what have you, uh, they do shadow ban. They admit to it. They don't say who they shadow ban, but. But they do admit to it, and they curate the news in a certain way, um, where certain topics that shouldn't even be trending suddenly become trending. So they are trying to affect. Um, They're manipulating the narrative to serve the status line, at correct. the at very least. Not, not, yes. not, not only that, they're also using their algorithms to f serve people what they want to hear. Based on their yeah, their, their, there's a bubbling yeah. effect that's yeah. just in the engineering of social media where your preferences are reinforced. Whereas in the past, you so would you see never see any news and, and, and from new a, a audience and it's productions a that were targeted to a broad audience. Because as libertarians, we get in these bubbles, and I get like a hundred Facebook yeah. friend requests today from libertarians. In the beginning, I would just add everybody because what the hell? Oh my God, there's more libertarians out there. That's awesome. Yeah. There's people like me, but. You know, after a certain amount of time, you need diversity. Otherwise, you think everybody just thinks the same way that you do. And when we go out there into the real world and we preach our philosophy, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're, we don't all think the same. We need the practice and we need to be exposed to other ideas. It's like nourishment. You know, you can't just eat the same food all day. You have to at least Put be challenged. Okay, so jumping ahead. 
I'm not examining the knife in our backs. How do we get it out? What for whether for the party or the movement? What's the response to this? Well, uh, I I think one of us needs to just create a, a social media platform. <laughs> <laughs> well, we tried that. Because you can't you do, you do that you, you, if it doesn't bring. The, the mass audience over. If it doesn't become a general audience appeal, then it's, oh, libertarians have their own social media and they're talking to each other. That's perfect. Then we're not engaging with anybody outside of our movement. And then they go, oh, well, we're still going to go over there to do activism and, and outreach. If we're So it, it doesn't solve the problem. True. Well, and, and what we really need to do is like uh, develop a libertarian sitcom for mainstream media. Seriously, because that, that's that's what they do to us. They they Isn't that, they, they, is they that program what Parks and Rec was? Yeah, right. Or Rick and Morty? Yeah, or Rick and Morty. Or yeah. South Park? Yeah. Like all these massive cultural icons, like do represent. I mean, I like to think of Idiocracy really, as the best unintentionally yeah. libertarian movie. It is. It really um, is. The celebration of intelligence and rationality <laughs> overcoming dumb, emotionally driven government. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're not far off from uh, who was the president in Idiocracy? Uh, Camacho. President Camacho. Camacho. Yeah. <laughs> I would take Terry Crews as president. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would. For sure. <laughs> that, that was the, and when was that movie made? Oh man, it was like in the '90s or 2000s, early 2000s. Yeah. Yeah. It was by the guy who made a uh, uh, King of the Hill. They yeah. probably yeah. saw yeah. Trump office, flirting office with the presidency yeah. decades ago. <laughs> and we're like, oh crap, we have to warn people. <laughs> oh my God, they took it as a prophecy. <laughs> and fulfilled it. Oh, no, now we have President oh, Trump. Gosh. We're one step away from yeah. Camacho. We're, we're, about, we're about six oh, months out of going to yeah. the doctor and him being like, oh, hey, man. shit's all <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> no, okay, seriously, though, like, I, I, I want to I make sure we go back to this. Oh, no. and, it's yeah. what plants create. Yeah. <laughs> it's got electrolytes. A friend of mine actually bought the rights to Brondo. Oh, really? <laughs> so... Wow. He's, he's been looking for a, a way to use that. And that Could that of, be the next uh, uh, p- uh, p- uh, the sponsor of the Adam versus Man <laughs> podcast? <laughs> Brondo. Dude, I should do that. Yeah, Brondo. All right, from now on, Adam versus the Man, brought to you by Brondo. It's got our plants correct. You won't do it. <laughs> I'll add it to my awesome. intro, so I don't even have to do it. My intro music will play out, List of Demands by Saul Williams, badass song, and then it's going to be me. Adam vs. the Man is brought to you in part by Brando. It's yeah. great. For every, done. Yeah, I'm cutting that out of this recording. Yeah. And it's going on the end of every intro oh, from yeah. now on. You won't do it. All right. It's happening. You won't it's do happening. It. You won't I'm, do it. Oh, shoot. You're scared. My intro has uh, network references. You know, the network, you know. Yeah. I'm mad as hell. Yeah. T- no. It's, yeah. Brando. Yeah. Well, yeah. We're writing. We're writing well, so idiocracy into. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, okay. Really, back to this challenge. Social media censorship, mainstream media censorship. Uh, you know, some and, and you got to you got to hand it to Vermin Supreme. His pitch, you know, seems to had uh, have gone through a really serious transformation in how the party views it because he's put in the time and he is representing the message and he's saying, "I'm lending my character." It's 2020. Let's let's nominate a jester. Mm-hmm. He's, he's not pretending to be we, something he's just, not. We got one in the office already. You know? Yeah, no, and that's yeah. that's part of his point. I, I, I kind of it kind of clicked for me what he was trying to do because at first I was like. Uh, you know, what is he just trying to make a big joke? Is he just trying to go out there and just advance his character? But I see his strategy is kind of like, well, it's politics is already a joke. We're against the duopoly. Uh, put me out there. I can promise that I'll, you know, I'll, I'll inject humor and, and libertarian ideas into an unsuspecting audience that's kind of a Trojan horse of comedy. And throughout history, the jester has always been able to talk shit to the king without getting his head chopped off. <laughs> yeah, right. and you know, and actually, you know, Kokesh Supreme has a nice ring to it. Well, I, I, I promise that uh, when, when we went on the platform of dissolving the federal government one way or another, uh, Vermin Supreme will be the minister of ponies. I'm sorry, custodian of ponies. Custodian of ponies. Custodian of ponies. Ooh, I got triggered by the word custodian. <laughs> I don't know if you heard this, but this kind of crazy guy from the California State Party, Mark Hurd, uh, went around telling everybody that I was a janitor and so we we capitalized on that 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 was the rumor yeah the rumor was that I'm a janitor and and so I, we capitalized on that <laughs> in the video are you guys on the, uh, the video yeah, you're so sorry. <laughs> this is a very engaging studio yeah, yeah this is a wild one I don't think I've ever done a podcast like this before. Yeah, man. What about people it? smoking weed everywhere and I drinking bags beers over there were you guys talking about Roman Supreme when you said that court jester yes yes, yes. Oh my god. Um, because the court jester can, can right. talk yeah. shit to the king yeah. and not get his head cut no, off. No, that's what I'm saying. I think that's why I voted for him and you. What's it? You see the Dave Chappelle, <laughs> no, Chappelle stand up? 
Okay, yes, but so does this? Yes, how does this fit into the strategy of? This is, you see the appeal. Exactly. Like, think where, where like now you see why right. this is one of the deeper reasons. It's not we, like I'll bet before you got to this point, Stephen, that you thought the vermin people were just going, ah, screw it, this will be funny. Yeah. And it's like, N -n yeah, this will be funny, but they're making a <laughs> serious pitch, and part of the appeal is. Hell, oh, we gotta okay. do something to, to clear this hurdle. We, we gotta of we gotta get him to strip on stage. The mainstream. <laughs> <laughs> or that. He'd probably do it. I don't know if you saw his uh, his spread in the the Libertarian Dad Bot Gallery. <laughs> uh. I'm pretty sure he'd do it. Which month is that? He I don't know what month he is, but he so, literally is only covered up by a Mickey hand. So you're gonna tell you're gonna tell him strip on stage, and oh. he's got your your nominating tokens. I signed the Libertarian Dad Bot Calendar today on my on my spread in there, and I was. Um, a For little, Catherine. I was a little How sad. That was that a, <laughs> did you realize, did you feel like you made it? I feel like I finally have ascended to my full form. Uh, I will, for, for now on, be a, a dad bod model. All right, y'all are avoiding the question. Because I know Vermin Stripping and National and the dad bod calendar are, are not going to be the answer to I, uh, I think we need to be viral. viral. I think we need to be strategic about our message and how we go out there. And we can't, we have to be, we have to be unique in how we, in how we, we have to be polarizing. We have to be different. We have to be something that grabs people's attention. We can't be boring. We have to be something. Polarizing. Something that I I, I I I tried to get implemented was actually going and and analyzing current events for the actual like constitutional basis and and legislative history of whatever it is. Like right now, this whole whole bullshit about you know Trump um, killing Soleimani. Everything he did was was legislatively permissible, of the way that the. Congress has has basically um, allowed what is the word I can't remember, but they've they've abrogated their power to the president so that they can get reelected. I think somebody talked about that earlier. But if we as libertarians took took shit like that, events like that, and actually drill down to tell people exactly why this is and how it happened and how to fix it, that's what we need to do is offer solutions. We can offer a, a constitutional so solution to almost everything based solely on Article 1, Section 8. The, you know, the, the authorized powers of government. Everything the government does that's not Article 1, Section 8 needs to be repealed. That's how we chop government down to size. So, you know, a analyzing things in current events for the constitutional basis and the legislative history to allow that whatever happened is, is what we should do. Because that, that way people look at us and say, oh, well, it makes sense now. And then they can start saying, oh, well, the libertarians might actually know what's going on. You know, because that's what we're not doing. We're not giving anybody really any good reason for paying attention to us. And we also need to dispel the narrative that if you're anti-war, you're unpatriotic and you're making the country less safe so that people that are anti-war feel comfortable stepping forward and being a part of the anti-war movement. Because that's the oldest trick in the book. Yeah, that, that ultra-patriotic... Ultra uh, kind of worship of all military and and uh, war is not good, and I think we're the one party that has the opportunity to kind of pull the curtain back and say, "Look what war does." You know, well, also the, we're going to say, "Here, look, here's a population of 250,000 people. You think they're really going to like get on a boat and come over here and yeah, attack us?" Yes. Yeah. You know, it's nuts. Yeah, and it, that's that's been my biggest issue for a long time. But I, I think I think <clears throat> these viral marketing campaigns are extremely important. It's something that I've talked a lot about. For those of you that don't know, because I didn't mention it You're in my resume, ton of, ton I'm running things. for national chairman. And, and yeah, I just had a I just had a post. I made a post on Twitter that actually got shared. By the other 98. That's six million followers. That was an accident on their part. <laughs> <laughs> they meant to just rip yeah. off your idea yeah. and reword it slightly. Yeah. So and take all the credit that, for it. And they're like, ah, shit. He got screenshots. Yeah. Now we have to leave this up. Yeah. I knew I, that was a that was a good. What I posted was good. It, it kind of pulled back the curtain on the fact that people in Iran are normal, everyday, working class, blue collar people like us. They have. Can you, you can recite it, right? Recite. Yeah. Tweet. I don't remember the it's exact. A, it's a beautiful tweet. picture. I said this is a. I said this is a. I said this is a picture in the background. I said this is Tehran. I said I said there there's families and children and and family pets here and people have dreams and aspirations and goals and they're just normal blue collar working class people who want to live their lives the same way that we do and uh, if you want war you that, are you're sick to want war you're sick to want war and it got and said so to all the chicken hawks chicken hawk hawks chicken hawk warmongers yeah like something like that uh, but it's 
so that that tweet actually, because of the other ninety eight percent, got uh, over two million reach with my name on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you wow. know, and and then people started cutting my name off and using it just like that, which is fine. But it got two million reach, and and it's because it was a good potent message. It was a good potent message, and if we do that at the national party, if we come up with a good strategy to to implement a marketing campaign, we have fifty yeah. we have mm -hmm. fifty state affiliates, and we have countless county affiliates around the country and every single one of them has a page well we talked about that like, like uh, a couple of years ago it seems like we need to be sharing oh, well, and, and the Same thing time. is they're, yeah. they're, they're, they kind of poo-pooed that idea because like well that way we're telling everybody what they need to do no. we, rather than it's we like put a together this a, is our marketing strategy we put together a marketing, it, a marketing campaign right? of some sort well, a hashtag right. a yeah. post and we, we say we, we go around the 50 state affiliates we say hey we're going to put this out on this day we'd love for you guys to also put it out we don't even have to share it they can put it out independently of us right and then they can go to the county affiliates and say hey on this day at this time put out this post if you can and then we're in front of a millions of people yes all at one time all at one exactly time. Exactly right. A, it's a focused exactly viral right. marketing campaign. I talked a lot about it in 2018. Now I'm in a position where I can actually build these things. You know what I mean? And, and I've shown that I can do it for myself personally. Why can't we do it with a national political party? And I think that's really a big way to overcome some of that shadow banning. And, you know, you just, you get a network of people that yeah, organic, the same uh, material. Organic reach. Yeah. You, a, they can't shadow ban us all, man. You yeah. know what I mean? And so... I think that's a really good way to do it, and I think a, a national political party can easily get that accomplished with no money. So, well, that's something I was talking to Stephen about before we actually started the po podcast. Is is the um, expansion curve in public awareness? You know, a Libertarian Party right now is about a three percent awareness among the general population. We need to get to ten percent before we have that big boost to where you know after after awareness reaches ten percent, then the, between ten and ninety percent is a very compressed time period. It just point. goes viral, Critical mass. And, yeah. and that's what we need to do: is absolutely right. go with the national strategy to all the way down to the localization yeah. level. Well, my so the another ninety-eight percent when they shared that that they took a screenshot of my tweet and shared it, and it had over forty thousand shares just from that one post. Then all those people shared it. Mm. You know what I mean? And then more people shared it, and then more people shared it. And it spreads out like a tree. We have a national political party with 50 state affiliates and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of mm. county affiliates that all have a minimum of 300 people on it. Yeah. If we all did, if we got together and, and started a network, I mean, it's a network. Like, well, you well, were doing that's, on that's, that's, That was the other answer. You know? is we, yeah. we need a TV network of our own, a 24-hour continuous well, streaming service. That's a little further down the road. I've talked a lot about building. But that's, that's, uh, that's how we get... We need to be to more aggressive with the media, period. Yeah. Um, and that's why I talked a lot about building that regional media team. Libertarian I think if we have news. someone who's constantly Welcome looking for media. Welcome to the nightly, you know. nightly Libertarian Okay, news. so, I'm, I'm okay, so look, right, now i got to in, in, indulge with a, a question that I have a, a, an interest in in terms of media production. Because when my TV show got canceled, if you remember, in 2011, RT mm. America, uh, it was at the same time that the judge got canceled. I forget the... It, but it was like a few months off, one way or another. One of us, I can't remember even who was first. Um, and Jesse Ventura had had a, sh a show for a short run um, on one of the smaller cable networks. Oh, geez, like, do you guys remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Conspiracy yeah. Files it was on... Like True TV or something? True TV, that or sounds Spike, right. Some one, one of those. Yeah. Um, and... A and then he got an RT contract that they wouldn't, they paid him off, but wouldn't let him come on for the first show. Yeah, so they, uh, a, a handful of different groups approached me at that time and said, hey, let's get a, a libertarian cable TV network together. Of course, you know, we want you to host a show. And I said, okay, that's great. Where's your tens of millions of dollars to start up? Because that's what you're going to need just yep. like that yeah. for our, just to get to RT's level yep. is going to mm -hmm. take hundreds of millions of dollars in four or five years, at which point the media landscape will have shifted. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think I've, I've seen people try and fail at on, on the internet is the shows that are live only. There's people mm -hmm. like tuning into live stuff, but when it comes to, well, I have to, if I want this show, I have to tune in at this time on the internet, and it's not just there afterwards. Yeah. Uh, no thanks. Right. People want it on, like, why take away on demand timing? Now, to your point, if it's a 24 hour network, a news network. Hey, kids! You know, What's up, man? Woo! Hey! Here's 
Vermin Supreme crash in the podcast. Welcome to our studio hey. audience. Hey. Right. Vermin, hey, we were just yeah. talking about you. Oh, jeez. My, my oh. ears. My ears. They were burning. Oh. Burning. Oh. Burning. burning. Oh, my ears are on fire. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I just pop by. I was on my way out, so I thought I'd say goodbye. Cheers. Well, thank you for stopping uh, by. You're what? You're you're what? We, we you know we have. This is my a our, our round table of. Well, it's a square table. Of, of, <laughs> yeah, rectangular, <laughs> really. But if you want to be technical, however, I'll leave go, it to Bert. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Don't be the logical guy. Totally wrong. Totally yes, wrong. Hey, you ruined <laughs> circle. You ruined the. We're also on a beach in Tahiti, yeah. <laughs> celebrating it's, the Georgia it's, State it's Convention. Like the Earth, it's flat. It's round. <laughs> It's a table. It's a little bit flat and a little bit round. So, Vermin, we're talking about how to get more media attention on the next uh, uh, camp or the next presidential election. Anything. How do we, well, how do we get out there? Yeah, how do we get our media so attention? We're, we're, we're What's the best you? way to pierce yeah. well, the, the, the His answer is be Vermin Supreme. I think we must be very, very respectable. I believe respectability <laughs> is very important sure in, uh, in making our message accessible to the general public. Because if you're not a guy in a suit and a tie, oh, then, you, then you're just not going to buy it. Fair. Yeah. So, yeah, so respectability is, is very important <laughs> in promoting any political ideology, <laughs> I believe. So, How does that mean we can't get you to strip during the convention? Oh, you can get me to strip on the fucking drop of a hat. I do parties. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, Ted. <laughs> well, I, those dollar bills I, back. Stop it, do, Ted. I gotta do something with all these single dollar bills. <laughs> of course, I, I, I think we could take a, a real lesson from uh, Turning Point USA. And <laughs> <laughs> if we all wear diapers, we can own the limbs. <laughs> How does that sound? Yeah? This just turned into my favorite right. podcast that I've ever done. <laughs> Absolutely. Alright, pull the chair over. <laughs> We we have weed. You can stay for. Oh, we have Ted Metz's weed. All right, okay. <laughs> it's my, really my good stuff. To leave, but uh, if you, yeah, now you're bribing one. We, yeah. yeah, we need to get a chair for Vermin so you can be in here. No chair. Yeah, it's okay. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> my fucking knees here. Here's the it's a round table. <laughs> so, it's a round. It's a round flat square table. <laughs> it's it's like an infinity table. It's, yeah. it's really like one of those infin infinity symbols. Uh, no beginning, no ending. It, it sort of folds in and on itself. It's a fractal. It's a fractal. <laughs> it's a fractal <laughs> table. It's a fractal <laughs> table. It's, uh, infinitely repeating. Infinitely repeating. Nice. We're nice. all fractals. This yeah. table exists in the space time continuum. It does yes. exist in the space time continuum. <laughs> well, you know, my experience has been that the media likes a hook. Sure. They give them a hook. Give Magic a boot hook. helps. Magic boot helps. Um, of course, well, okay, for example, I'll say the New Hampshire primary coming up in a couple weeks. New Hampshire primary. Um, it is a very small state. It uh, has every damn last Democratic candidate up there uh, running for the nomination. They all have campaign headquarters. They all have campaign staffs. They all have uh, campaign buses. And they all have campaign events. In a couple weeks, they're going to be bouncing around like maniacs. It attracts media from around the globe, from every source you can imagine. Uh, right in uh, you know, the last week or so, there's media. There is Radio Row, where there's an actual row of people doing uh, uh, broadcasts uh, based on this whole primary in front of the Holiday Inn, or I, I don't know what it is now, Doubletree, I think, uh, there's this huge giant platform uh, where there's like half a dozen of the networks that, that are broadcasting their various stand-ups from. Uh, the New Hampshire primary is an extremely underutilized uh, place in the uh, political uh, calendar. I mean, it is there, and I have personally, of course, used it uh, for the past 20 years as a, as a launch pad. I've been utilizing that that. Uh, mass density of media who are all looking for a story, who are all looking for something interesting, and the fact that all the candidates are up there. Um, so it's simply a matter of if you have a creative enough vision and are astute enough to the circumstances under which to unleash it, um, you know, you can grab that attention. Now I've got an idea for that. Let's yes. do an armed patriot march in support of Virginia. Oh, that in, would, that would be a good one. I'm sure you could get the Free Staters in there. Um, they're always up for a parade. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I, I had an armed pony parade back in November where we had guns and ponies. I, I saw and, the video from um, <laughs> that. Was, you know, <laughs> sometimes Vermin Supreme's going to take away your guns and give you better guns. Our hope could be that that's a rally point for a march to Virginia. 
Oh, it, it, it could be. It's pretty chilly that time that, of year. That's but, <laughs> but, you, but you know, once again, I mean, if you're doing a media stunt, you know, what you say isn't necessarily what is real. One time, I that's I, I remember yeah. a guy one time was gonna um, do a, a, a armed march on Washington D.C. Hmm. I can't remember his name. Uh, <laughs> and then he he, uh, he ended up loading a shotgun in D.C. and getting arrested for that. But I, I that was one of that but was yes, actually once again, yeah, that was the day after stunt. he left Georgia, a prepper event. Yeah, that was one of those. That was one of those uh, moments for me that really helped me become more of a libertarian. When I, I talk about Adam Kukesh a lot, when I'm when I'm talking about how I became a libertarian, that was one of those moments where I was like, "Yeah, this is badass." Yeah. <laughs> I, there's, 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 there's these symbolic Amazing. activities yeah. that we yeah. undertake. Um, that you know, I mean, what, what could be simpler than putting you know a shotgun shell in a shotgun? Sure. But once yeah. again, where did it happen? What are they? What is the context? Yeah. What are the circumstances? Yeah. And that's what the big uh, conspiracy was. That was, that was a green screen. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, hey, hey, you guys remind me of something. I, I want to throw this out there while Vermin's here. I've been asked, you know, what are you going to do to get in the debates? You've gotten that question before, right? Like, how would how, what would you do to get oh, the, the commission the general presidential election debates? debates to get you? Yeah. Well, so, mm -hmm. if you recall, in, in 2008, when uh, Ralph Nader was running and wasn't allowed in the debates, he went and got arrested yes, outside, like trespassing yes, on his way in. Solid publicity. Yeah. Like Dennis Kucinich. Uh, Few years later. Right? So you remember we organized the Veterans March for Ron Paul in 2012. We had about 500 vets in formation chanting President Paul and the Fed. President Paul. Marching on the White House, that. turning their backs, yeah. uh, a moment of silence for veteran suicides. Combine those things. If we have veterans for whoever the nominee is crashing the debates oh. in formation like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's it's i hate playing the veterans card but if the people who give it any credibility will say well we'll listen to you for a second if you do and what we're saying is listen up america you better listen to the libertarian this time right like, we're gonna make it happen and if, if you're the nominee mm -hmm. I'd, I'd be happy to organize that mm -hmm. to get you in the sure. debate i'd be like, happy think, to also help with yeah that. And, and whoever the nominee As is, I think we need to make that happen. Libertarian, yeah. absolutely. Sure. No, it's a powerful statement, and once again, it's uh, choosing the time and place to, uh, for maximum uh, impact in terms of publicity. And, Your uh, veterans' marches have always been great. The, yes. the one you did Except the one in New Orleans. I, I liked it. That was, was super, yeah. superb. Yeah, it was yeah. beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it was great. I, it's I woke up a little late for that one. Yeah, we, we, we grapple like, with how to play the veterans' card. Sure. You know, and I, I remember, so I, I wear the combat action where it's funny, Bob Dole, I'm Bob Dole. You yeah. remember Bob oh, Dole? I know Bob Dole. Yeah. Bob Dole says, hi, I'm Bob, Bob Dole. Dole. Yeah. One of my favorite encounters was with Bob Dole when I asked him uh, if he supported mandatory toothbrush and <laughs> <laughs> And uh, his answer was, as long as they are locally controlled. <laughs> and then I asked him, my follow-up question is what he was going to do about the weather. And he told me that he was going to pray for good weather on election day. <laughs> so he had two really good answers. Who was really it recently really that you asked back. if they would go back in time with you to oh, kill that me? that was Tom Stoll. Oh, that's right. That's right. Oh, Sorry. Geez, that guy Bob was too Dole, excited. He wore the purple heart. And someone was like, well, what is that? He's tacky wearing the veterans, anything like that. And they said, he's a World War II purple heart veteran. He can wear whatever the fuck he wants. And I was like, Fair. yeah. And, and it, it's well, sad, yeah, but yeah. like... It helps You're, for well, the people who need that to listen, who won't turn down a veteran. It's better like, than the, the folks who uh, remember when uh, John stupid. Kerry was the nominee and uh, and Swift the other, boating. The, oh, the opponents came up with a, I saw band aids with purple hearts on them. Oh, well, Did I don't have a purple that? heart. Yeah, right. No, but they were like yeah. little. Per they were band aids with purple hearts on. Yeah, them. yeah, no, I remember to, that. To make fun of that. Yeah, I think shit. I think I mean, if you're using your veteran status to stop wars. It's yeah. a good. It's no a good kidding. thing. Yeah. It's a good thing. That's yeah. yeah that's that's the, the, young John Kerry was it. a fucking yeah. Yeah, no, I said righteous. So people yeah. thought for me as an IVW activist that I was like uh, the, the the next generation's John Kerry for a while. And I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not going that way. <laughs> <laughs> no way. But yeah, um, operation or uh, when they threw the medals over the the fence mm. at, at the Capitol. Yes. He organized that. He he testified before Congress. I did that. He organized Winter Soldier, mm -hmm. and and we yes, did that with IVAW. Very righteous and, and yeah, it back was in his day. 
Yeah, and it was. It, it, and then, it, he, it, then it he married money. See, and, and yeah, Heinz <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> Carey. Where's that? Sure. Yeah, it's, ketchup, it's ketchup will do that. Really sick. Ketchup. <laughs> ketchup will do that. A lifetime man. supply of ketchup will <laughs> fuck you up, man. You don't know what that temptation's like. <laughs> and and now now, <laughs> Adam supports his, butter. His, he likes uh, butter. Yeah, brought to you by butter. Fake butter. I love telling that story. I went to a Waffle House. Are you gonna pass those this way? <laughs> I went. I went on. Oh, I went, nice. I was on tour with Adam for about two weeks, and we stopped at a Waffle House to get some waffles. And he walked in with an entire stick of his own butter. <laughs> Put the entire stick of butter on their, the waffle. Their butter sucks. <laughs> was it margarine or was it real butter? No, it was real, I had real butter. Okay, and he kept saying the whole time, "I do like the fake stuff now, <laughs> but the, the yeah, waffle, nice. oh, waffle House." Hold that up for the camera. What keeps my boot? Ah! <laughs> Vermin Supreme's boot. It's a Rod Waffle Supreme House menu waffle that house. keeps your boot. <laughs> hold on, hold on. 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 This is beautiful stuff. We are a little bit That's an all star solution. The Waffle, uh, I'm sure that the Waffle House Caucus fully supports you now. I only do. Well, Spike is my VP. Yeah. Yeah. I love Spike. He's become my very good friend. Hey, calm down. Ted. <laughs> what is Thank you for getting the cork out for me. I'll unscrew it the rest of the way. Cheers. So we haven't really answered this question of my satisfaction. Social media, coordination, all that much. You're looking at the, the studio audience in the mirror. <laughs> And we've got the Vermin Supreme approach, civil disobedience, street theater, activism, where we have a lot of overlapping history. I almost, I almost asked you my question in the debate tonight, and I, I would, what I would have said, um, and, and maybe, you, maybe this is your chance to answer, but. Um, my hand raising thing was more clever, obviously. You saw oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. But no, I wanted to give you the time, but I, I, the question was, you know, like, I've, I've admired you and we've been. We've known each other since I interviewed you in 2012 in New Hampshire when I was yes. up there supporting Ron Paul, and you know, having seen you come into the party like this, you know, I respect what you're doing and your pitch, and I've been surprised to see how you have consistently gained momentum. You know, what's the core of your appeal? And just give you the, the opportunity because I think oh, it's oh, geez, I think it is. Is there like a small within I mean, the LP? Oh, within the LP. Yeah. Goodness gracious, I do. It's hard for me to say. Well, because we, we so. I mean, I, I, you know, I, you know, I, I mean, I was told that I've been a libertarian. You know, libertarians told me I was a libertarian. Yeah. That's how I found out I was a libertarian. So we, we put our um, finger on one element of it with Stephen's story earlier, where at first he understood, put up a jester, okay, that's a serious pitch, but it changed today to more, more of a. The old two parties, the duopoly is a joke. Correct. So let's be a part of the joke exactly. and, yes. and be the Trojan horse that distributes an idea that you know that, that, that they're not expecting. I mean, I think the, the hashtag baby. own the joke. <clears throat> which, which clicked for me today because because this campaign, I met you in 2012 at Paul Fest, mm -hmm. and I've always known the character. And again in, in Orlando, and, and I believe in I believe you're in New Orleans. And uh, no, it's no, okay. Okay. okay, but 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 it clicked for me today. And after speaking with some Floridians, that also interview on the Burning Boot podcast. That, yeah. I went on that podcast. Woo -hoo. <laughs> <laughs> and so you know, so I kind of got it. And it's kind of like making sense that, that what 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 your campaign is you know is doing. And I, it clicked for me, and it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I the modern gestures of today, an honest media, right? offer on the table. I mean, George Carlin. <laughs> This audience, I've developed this this brand, this this character, the the, the whole make believe universe, and um, <laughs> it has just such incredible appeal to the kids because kids are naturally anti-authoritarian, kids are naturally loving irreverence, and that is what I've brought to the table: just sheer on irreverence, sheer on anti-authoritarian attitude, and uh, and using humor. Uh, to communicate and uh, and make fun of and, and expose uh, the powers that be, mm -hmm. and I think just kids naturally get it. Uh, um, you know, I've been doing it for so long, but I, I just think that you know society is sort of caught up to it. The, the state of politics is caught up to it, and uh, I think the Libertarian Party is is finally seeing the the utilitarian 
aspects of it and uh, the potential uh, that it has to, uh, you know, slap people upside the head and wake them up like some sort of zone, a zen cone, you know, where like uh, li literally sometimes the uh, the Buddhist monk would, would slap their student to knock some sense into them or have them open their eyes. And, which would be a violation of the nap, of course. Well, I'm from the, the Conk Republic. I'm from down in Key West. So we had our own revolution that was kind of based on comedy, but it was a real thing. Yes. The federal government put a roadblock up on, uh, on the stretch, and they wouldn't let people down to the Keys unless they, they showed their passport and went to a checkpoint. So the people of the Key West, we said, well, if you're going to treat us like another country, we'll become another country. So they, we, we became uh, the Conk Republic. We seceded from the Union. We declared war on the United States. And uh, we... So we uh, the the Conquer Public Navy attacked the Coast Guard cutter with stale Cuban bread and fruit. <laughs> <laughs> the battle raged on for minutes. <laughs> <laughs> then the the Navy Coast Guard cutter commander surrendered, uh, but we eventually uh, we 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 uh, surrendered from the war. We asked for two things in return. Number one was a billion dollars in restitution, <laughs> and the second was that they lift the roadblock. We did get the second one, <laughs> but to this day, you know, we we still honor the Cocker Republic and the idea of what democracy. Year, what year was that? I think it was 1982. Wow! And people amazing. ask, that's is, an amazing story. Is the Cocker Republic a state? And it is a state. It's a state of mind. Yeah. So that's our that's our shtick. Yeah. At our last LNC meeting in, in Miami, he. Or was it Miami or yeah, the one before? Or, or I think it was Austin. You brought all the Conquer Republic no, no, flags. That was, that was, was it Miami? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he brought all the he brought us all uh, a flag of the Conquer Republic and like the story of ha what happened. It was really really cool. I never knew that. And uh, Admiral neat. Finbar Gittleman, the Admiral of the Conquer Republic Navy, is a libertarian. <laughs> and he will be a keynote speaker at our convention. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. Oh, so that's that's gonna gonna be a I got to interview this, this yeah. guy. And, uh, a very uh, powerful <laughs> illustration of the power of uh, you know semi facetiousness or using. Humor as a front. I mean, it, it has allowed me to be more aggressive than any motherfucking thing I could imagine. Ain't no way I'm going to get close to those uh, real uh, sanctioned political candidates if I'm going to be ranting and raving and, and coming from a point of anger. No, but because I'm stupid and humorous and funny, I can get right up to them and uh, get them to elicit some very interesting responses. It's the John Lennon quote that can flick your beard and pull your hair and get in your face and if they make you angry they win and they know how to deal with you if you get violent but what they can't deal with is kindness and humor True. Oh, I just wonder how many people on the bus know how to spell facetious I know how to spell facetious. Can you spell feces? If you can spell feces and you can spell fascist, is how it's spelled. F A C E T I O U S. Good job. There we go. Got it. I went to school. Government school. Yeah, I got spell check on my computer. I can say. I wish my mouth had spell check. Yeah, I wish uh, my my phone had spell check because I am the king of typos when I post stuff. I have to go back and edit it three times every time I post something because I just, you know, I got these fast thumbs and I'm just. Do you, typing. Not, do you not you swipe? Have an Android? No, I don't swipe. No. Oh, you got to learn how I don't to swipe. Like swipe. It will change your life. I'm the fastest typer without no. swipe. No, some of the things with that I do with swipe or speech to text, they, you know, the translations or the autocorrects. Fucking hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I've never once meant to tell somebody to duck off. <laughs> Not once. <laughs> I was going to let him do it. Yeah. <laughs> you alright down there, Vermin? Yeah, I'm alright. All right. Smooth. Smooth. Yeah. yeah. So you suggest using humor to point out the obvious? I think so. I think. I mean, obviously, it seems like not everybody gets it, but I mean, that's the risk you take, I guess. I think you've done well. I, I, you have one of my very, very good friends on your campaign team, Matthew McCowan. So, yes. and uh, he he's he loves you man. to death. Yeah. It was unlikely when when I found out he was supporting you, and I was like, well, all right. And he's explained yes, a lot. I mean, to I, me. I am shocked, surprised that you know I have such amazing supporters. <coughs> and I was really surprised team. to hear that you they said Desiree solid. was your campaign they manager. Fucking solid. She reached out. It was her. It was her idea. That's, I mean, that's really cool. I, I, you know, I mean, it wasn't my idea to run on this level. Sure. Not at all. If it weren't for my team, I would just be doing the same thing that I've done every year. Just having a lot of fun, showing up the primary, show up here, show up there. Maybe goof with the, with the libertarians. But certainly never would I have ever thought to run for the nomination 
as the party, as a serious contender or a candidate. It would have been purely a pretend exercise. But this time, it's personal. It's, it's, personal. Personal. <laughs> it's not even personal because, you know, I. Day two first blood. You get, <laughs> <laughs> you get older, you get less fucks. Yeah. I mean, you know, between you and I, I mean, my campaign staff is much more invested in. <laughs> I've got no ambition. Right. What the fuck am I gonna do? Oh, I'm a very powerful figure in the Libertarian Party now. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't see it. I've got no use for it. Well, hey, so making an offer. We've got a few like, minutes no. left uh, before we get to an hour here, and I, and I want to make sure I get to one last yeah, question. Actually, sure we'll start with Vermin <laughs> here, and yeah, it's really the perfect segue from what you just said. Being new to the party organizationally. What's your take as, as someone who is, is a, is a full-timer, is professional, has been involved in what you've been involved in for years, what's that unique outsider first impression of the party organization and national leadership? God, I mean, I've been doing really well to remain blissfully unaware. I, for my purpose... Neutrality through for, ignorance? For my, yeah, ignorance for, is strength. For, 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 <laughs> yeah, I like it. Functioning it's properly to candidate, for, for loving everybody, getting along with everybody. I, I really try and I try and not know the drama. I try not to know the... Oh, no, I'm not That's asking the drama. Just like, just like organizational, organizational, organizational culture, like, oh, I mean, you know, hey, strengths, ev- weaknesses. Everybody loves the Robert Rules of Order. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right, all right. All right. Everybody all right. loves Point taken. I Point taken. Point taken. Point taken. Point taken. Uh, if you're not into that, forget about yeah. it. Yeah. Friends, if you don't know the Robert's Rules or you ain't got no business being a libertarian. <laughs> yeah. Am I right, yeah. people? God. So there's, yeah, there's, there's got to be a way. I've, I've talked, there's, there's got to be a way around. I'd like to amend, yeah, the, I'd like to amend the motion. No, no, it's, 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 no, hold on. You know, I'd like to amend the amendment. Hold on. No, no, it's, it's guys like, hold on, no, it's, 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 it's good I'm chairs. I'm going to pull a no, no, It's good chairs. A, a good chair can say, no, this is how we're doing it. No objection, no objection, yeah. no objection. Well, and then just chair moves get through their along. shit. A, a, and a, a no, you want to debate commas, there's a, there's, a, there's a committee yeah. over there. Exactly. Go rearrange the why we have the last one to make guys. I will say, you know, in my time in the left, I mean, those fuckers are trying to make consensus through, you know, block or draw. I mean, it's a very different organizational way of, of uh, achieving a consensus. Um, so that is very different. And um, I guess it works. I mean, I Arguably. Works. I mean, I, I, I've seen the other way also work. You know, where, yeah. where everybody, you know, do you have any blocks? Does anybody have any rep, 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 you know, reservations on this proposal? Show of hands. No? Okay. But that's the way it is. Uh, um, that's okay, too. Um, the so, LSC, you know, I don't, I mean, it's a voluntary hierarchy. It's a voluntary system that everybody's uh, accepting as such. I mean, in, in that way, it's a representational, I suppose. Uh, um, you know, anarchism, my understanding of anarchism has never precluded uh, leaders or leadership, but right. it's always been the understanding that it's a temporary it must be uh, 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 type. I mean, if somebody and has consensual. A, yeah, if, they, if somebody has yep. a skill that the that, requ- that the people want to uh, draw upon in order to achieve a certain goal, and a voluntary, uh, yeah, we all consent to that. That's fine. Um, but it's, it's when it becomes, uh, you know, entrenched that it, that it becomes problematic. So, I mean, I, you know, I don't have any problem with it. whatever organizational structure or hierarchy that is agreed upon by the people that seems to work for those people. Uh, and, unless it's, you know, tried to jam down the, the throat or enforce on other people. Like some governments I could have <laughs> 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 uh, All right, So, Josh, to our chair candidate, however you want to reword the question, most pressing issue, where are we as an organization? Well, I think I think we made some serious strides in 2019, for sure. You know, it's the the largest and fastest party membership growth uh, on a non-presidential year since 2005. Well, hey, I made it a presidential year. Sure, you did. You did. You're right. You did. Uh, you and and almost Bill Weld several times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, hey, come on. <laughs> come on. No, no. I know. I, uh, oh man, we were just all waiting for him to announce, and he's like, "I'm a Republican now." I'm like, <laughs> shocking. Yeah. Shocking. Yeah. Uh, no, I, you know, I think we're I think we're moving in the right direction. I wouldn't run for chair if I didn't think. I wouldn't run for chair if I didn't think there was areas we can improve on, and I, and I didn't think I was the person who could improve those areas. Well, now this was my my, my <laughs> conversation with many people. I, I like Josh; he's got potential. He needs some maturity, and he needs some um, some 
practice. Yeah, practice. Absolutely. And and it was nothing against you because you know now I think you might be actually ready. I appreciate that. I do. So, and and I put in the time and I did the things I said I was. I think doing. I even told you that, didn't I? Yeah. A lot of people did. That was the that was the big thing in 2018. People were like, "You just we don't know you." You know, you, you're running on ideas and goals and hopes, and you don't have anything to prove to. No successes. But I think the party's having successes, and I don't want to just attribute that to me. I, I'm the number one recruiter on the LNC, but the party as a whole is, is thriving right now because of people like Adam and Vermin and you guys doing what you're doing, and because of me. Not not just. Well, that's just it. I mean, that's, that's, I mean? That's, that's the thing about most organizations in general, and even when you form coalitions, somebody with the biggest ego has to take all the credit for everything. <laughs> it's true. Instead it's true. of like everybody, let's combine our talents and have synergy. It's been, it's been a great it's been a great year for growth for the Libertarian Party 2019 and I, I want to double that in 2020 and I think we have the tools to do that. I really do. I really it's, do. it's mutually yeah. shared success. We've got our boots on the ground. We've got some boots, boots on, on our heads. heads. <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thanks All right. Hashtag. hashtag. <laughs> New hashtag. Keep booting. Yeah. <laughs> Keep booting even when they say no. <laughs> Whoa. That's what he said on stage today. I was like, whoa! Mark Whitney, he's like, keep banging even if they say no. I was like, whoa, buddy, you might want to rephrase that a little bit. But. All right, Stephen, I want to give you a floor to answer this question. Where's the party at? What's the most pressing issue facing us right now? So I think the party's heading in a good direction, but I think the most pressing, pressing issue is epidemic in all the libertarian state affiliates around the, the country which is the institutionalization of knowledge. Mm. So Right, we started a wiki for that. That was, that was one of my big complaints um, taking over chair a couple of years ago. Yeah. Like, all the people with the institutional knowledge are, are gone. Well, we don't even know how to file our paperwork for yeah. fuck's sake. So, you know, we get these so, people in the party, we're constantly reinventing the wheel. Exactly. And we pretty so much we have a standardized every policy and procedure cycle. manual. And so, look at, let's say like, let's say you go to Starbucks in Seattle, and then you go to Starbucks in the Miami airport, and you go to Starbucks in, you know, in Mexico. You're getting a consistent experience. Why? What do these organizations do is they have learning management systems. And a learning management system basically takes the knowledge that's been gained over a period of time, it puts it into a guide or a policy or a video or whatever, and we can put it online and post it to our people. So let's say you're a new treasurer, and that's I say, we, Mr. We Treasurer, that, that congratulations and good luck. And so now we train our people, we train our, you know, whether it's our, our candidates, our treasurers, we, we our reps. we got the schedule for reporting, for we, FEC we, filing, we, blah, blah, blah. We create consistently, we're not constantly reinventing the wheel. Exactly. And I actually spoke to Dan Fisherman about this because in the Philly Support Committee, we, I, I had the idea to use Moodle as a learning management system. I brought up with Dan Fishman, he liked the idea so much that he's actually having the IT committee uh, spearhead that project, and that's something we're working on in Florida as well, and, and hopefully it's something we can offer as a service to other states. So we need to grow as a party operationally, and that's an area where we've severely lacked is in, in operations. We just don't... It seems like an easy force multiplier, lock on the institutional yes. knowledge so we're not reinventing shit every time. Well, exactly. and then Website sharing. templates, yes. event formulas, that way campaign we can start formulas, springboarding and how to run a meeting, yes. how to do a fundraiser, all that stuff. Yes, because it, yeah, people, it, it, is, it is shocking how they could get weak we are in that one thing. Yeah. Yeah. Anything can happen, they could leave the party. And there's no good turnover, just methodology. But well, yeah, yes. the, the, I'm glad someone's making that a priority. All right, Ted, we'll give you the last word. All right, well, the last word is every time the government chips away at our constitutional rights, they take us closer and closer to complete slavery. Also, taxation is in theft. the form of Sorry. income tax is involuntary servitude. No, that's right. And inflation is theft. Yep. Hey Ted, how did Jeffrey Epstein die? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, hey, well, I, no, wait, I caught wait, up wait. with him in Israel. <laughs> no, wait, wait. How did the, uh, even better question? How did the videotape surveillance get uh, deleted? <laughs> <laughs> the same way the the ten percent of the votes for my governor race didn't show up sure. in, in the in the poll. For the record, I love Hillary Clinton, and I have not known <laughs> ever been suicidal. <laughs> and that's our show. Thank you for tuning in. This special edition of Adam versus the Man with Ted Met. Stephen Akila, Joshua Smith, and Vermin Supreme. Peace Don't forget, love, kids, smash the state! <laughs> Brush your teeth. <laughs> Thank you to our live studio audience. Woo! Adam vs. the Man is made possible by people who care about freedom, like our Patreon supporters whose monthly contributions get them perks and exclusive content. Find out how you can help 
by going to patreon.com slash Adam versus the man.